everybody, welcome to That's Cakeable. I'm Janine and a little birdie tells me that Mother's Day is just around the corner. So today I'm gonna to create something that's just a little bit different but really easy for you to do at home. Now we've all seen those beautiful candles in jars that smell absolutely delicious. So delicious in fact that with some of them you just wanna dive right in and eat them. That'd be gross, but not with this one. This is actually a cake in a jar that looks like a candle. I've made sure to make this tutorial super simple so you can do this at home. So come on, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need for this project are some jars with lids. Now really the only prerequisite for this is that you can eat from them. So glass or ceramic or plastic is fine. The other thing you wanna be sure of is that the glass jar is straight up and down. There's no curves up into the top or curves down into the bottom. I picked these up from Kmart for $4 each. The next thing you wanna do is line the entire jar with buttercream. Now you wanna make sure that you get right down into the corners. Now if your jar isn't transparent, you don't have to worry too much about making this part perfect. But if it is, you wanna smooth that buttercream right against the sides of the jar, making sure you get rid of any air bubbles or lines that may have formed. I've just taken an angled spatula and run that right around the edge of that jar until it was smooth. Once you're happy with the coverage of the jar, you then wanna take a gloved finger and just run around the top lip of the jar, removing any excess. That's it, your jar is prepared. Pop it into the fridge for about 10 minutes to firm up before we move on to the next part. Okay, so the buttercream is nice and firmed up now, so it's time to start filling our candle cakes with delicious, yummy goodness. To make my first candle cake, I've baked a dark chocolate five inch round cake, and I've split it into two one inch layers. I've then taken a circle cutter after measuring it against the jar. Well, the first one I didn't, you'll see that in a minute. And cutting out circles that coincide with the size of the jar. Now remember to allow for the buttercream. That's what I didn't do for my first jar. For my chocolate dream candle, I started by adding some chocolate mousse. Then I topped that with some caramel and sprinkled it with some cacao nibs. And this is where I ran into a little bit of trouble. Silly me hadn't allowed for the buttercream, cut the circle and then just tried to shove it in. Don't do what I did. Eventually got it in there, but made sure that I made the adjustment for the next layer. Once again, a layer of chocolate mousse a layer of caramel and a sprinkling of cacao nibs. I also ended up having to cut this layer down a bit so that it didn't go above the line of the buttercream. I popped that on top and I set that aside to chill. I then went on to my next jar, which I filled with pistachio buttercream, a layer of vanilla cake, then a rose water simple syrup, more pistachio buttercream and more vanilla cake. Pop that into the fridge also. Because this is so simple and you don't need a lot of cake to make these, I went a little bit crazy. So off camera, I made a third candle cake. This one was just a vanilla cake filled with strawberry Swiss meringue buttercream, using real strawberries, of course. Okay, now we've got the cake portion of the candle cake ready. It's time to put the top on. So to make the tops for these cakes, I simply used chocolate discs. I laid down some baking paper and melted some white chocolate. I then poured the white chocolate onto the baking paper. Just to give it a little bit of extra something something, I added some dried rose petals to one of the chocolate discs and some cacao nibs to the other. For the strawberry one that I made off camera, I didn't add anything, but you could add some freeze dried strawberries possibly. Now, once again, choosing a circle cutter that does coincide with the same size as the top of the candle, I cut out discs from the semi-firm chocolate. Just be super careful with this part because the chocolate can crack. Two methods I've used to avoid this is number one, coating the edge of my cutter in some vegetable shortening. And number two, only if you're using metal cutters, of course, is heating up the edge of the cutter with a brulee torch. Once those are cut out, I'm taking a metal scribe tool and I'm just heating that up a little bit also and placing a hole straight through the center of those discs. Now for the wick. For the wicks on these candles, I'm using a raw hemp twine covered in beeswax, so it's all natural. It's non-toxic and we're not eating it anyway. If you're crazy enough to have watched all of the videos on my channel, you would have seen me use this wick before. All the way back in September of 2019, I'm hazarding a guess it was my first or second video ever. 
embarrassing. I used this to make a candle way back then. So I've cut off a length of the wick and I've just made a double knot at one end and cut the excess off that end. I then fed the rest of the length of the wick up through the bottom of the chocolate disc and there it was ready to rock and roll. It's also handy having the wick at this point because it helps you place it on top of the cake candle. And last but not least, to finish it off, of course, we had to have some pretty labels. So I just created these labels on my home computer and printed them out on plain paper. I just branded them as That's Cakeables Cake Tools, made up a pretty name for each of the flavors and designed my labels. Once I'd printed them out, I cut them out, put some glue stick on the back of them and making sure that my glass was nice and clean, attached them to the front of the candle. Oh, cake tool. And that's it guys, that's how you make these amazing edible candles in a jar. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me again this week. Don't forget that if you make these at home, please tag me on my socials so that I can check them out. I love seeing everybody else's work. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're informed every time I upload a new video. Happy Mother's Day to all the mums and the nans and the grands and the dads who are mums and the mums to be out there. And I'm sure if they saw this, they'd want you to go and get your cake on. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.